breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. All right, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of Brainstorming with the Docs. I'm Dr. Colby Condis. My co-host, as always, Dr. Glenn Harrison. How's it going, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm, I'm excited uh, to be able to, to jump into the second section or second segment. Episode though, two. With Roy. Your yeah, boy, Roy. Rough fitness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's get right into it. He talks about some of the, uh, I think he in this episode, he talks about the three pillars. Um, he'll yeah, talk a little three... bit about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so stay tuned. Give it a listen. Let us know what you think after Dr. Glenn's interview with your boy, Roy. Here he is. You got to be ready. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's true. And, and it's not going to be. Anybody I talk to that worked out with you, again, referrals and stuff like that, they say, you know, I used to work out and I did pretty good. But then then when I started to work with Roy and, and his wife, oh, my goodness, they <laughs> kicked my butt. I've never worked out that hard before. So there's there's something to it. There's 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 an importance to it. Right. It, it's yeah. not you're not doing it for fun. You're doing it for purpose. Yeah. Right? Well, and fun really, is a side effect. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is. Right. We try to keep that fun and people love the workouts, but it's interesting because most of the time, especially when somebody first starts based on like they want to get results as fast as possible because we like love instant gratification, they will come into the gym and just annihilate themselves. And most of the time we are like, maybe do like as coaches, especially on their first day, we're like, we want you to be able to walk tomorrow. And they're like, I got this. I can do it. And it's so funny to see that journey. And then they can't walk the next day. I'm like, you got to learn, right? Like we told you, you know, but that's kind of where it's cool too. Like when somebody walks into the gym is that I think a lot of people overcomplicate the process as well. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Think because that's one of the obstacles. One of the biggest things when somebody comes to our gym, we give them when they start, they are only allowed to come to the gym three days a week. And they're like, mm. they're like three days a week. They're like, when I start my fitness journey, I go six days a week and I do two hours on the treadmill. And I'm like, yeah, but how long did that last? They're like, well, I lost a lot of weight. I'm like, is success losing weight or is it keeping it off? They're like, oh, well, I guess. And then I say, well, what if I can get you all the results you want and it will fit better into your schedule because you only have to do three hours instead of six hours a week or more. And then you get to spend more time with your family and more time doing this stuff. And we get you all the results with not having to do as much time. Isn't that the goal? Right? right. Yeah. And then they're like, well, that makes sense. I was like, it's like, I promise you, if I can get you all these results only working out three days a week, would you take that? They're like, well, yeah, and they're skeptical at first, right? That's but of course. we also both know that recovery and rest and stress management is a huge part. So having four days to like recover from when people are gonna push themselves in the workouts, it's like it's important for them to have those rest days, right? But also nutrition is gonna be the biggest thing when it comes to your mm-hmm. metabolism, your hormones, the weight loss, all of it, right? And so that's the biggest factor that most people think they have figured out, but they're missing that key. Right. That's right. And and then they're trying to compensate for those things that are missing by logging more hours in the gym. Bingo. I can't tell you how many people come and join our online program and they're like, well, I already work out six days a week. Are you going to make me change that? I'm like, no, just keep working out six days a week and we'll just work on your nutrition. And then they said, <laughs> like literally they've been going to the gym six days a week for the last 10 years. I'm like, yeah. And again, this is the fitness industry for you. I'm like, sweet. How much weight have you lost? Well, I haven't really lost any weight. I'm like, did the gym ever ask you what your goals are or check in and make sure you're seeing success? Well, no. I'm like, if you don't go to the gym for a week, do they call you and ask you where you're at? Well, no. I'm like, does this gym even care if you're like moving in the right or not? That's where we wanted to be different is like online or in person. It's like, we want you to be successful. Like we want this to be the gym that you come to and it's like, wow, this gym actually changed my life. They actually cared about me. Yeah. So quick question about that. What do you see? What criteria do you see in your facility or system? Let's just not call it the facility, but the system that you use, the strategies that you use that is unique. I know a few of them, but for people who are listening and, you know, they're kicking tires, looking, thinking about it, hopefully this inspires them that they don't have to kill themselves and and X, Y, Z, and they can live a better life. Uh, But what, what pillars, what pieces do you see again, that are critical uh, for the success that you got? I got three of them for you. So we've done a lot of different programs over the years, taking me a long time to figure this out. Uh, But no matter what program we do, you're online, you're in person, you're here for six weeks, 90 days, a year, like regardless of what you're doing, there's three pillars of success. There's workouts, there's nutrition, and there's accountability. Mm -hmm. 
And you have to have all three to have long-term success. And most people who don't have long-term success, it's because they're missing one of those three things, right? And then once you have all three things, then it's a matter of like, okay, are they the right things for you, right? Like, are you doing the right nutrition plan on the right workout program? Do you have the right coach or community that you're surrounding yourself with, right? But with workouts, um, again, and you were going to ask this later, I guess, but uh, <laughs> Yeah, we'll just go. So with workouts, there's there's three things that I've really identified. And the first thing is that you have to understand this is not temporary. You're going to be doing this the rest of your life. So the first key component to workouts is that you find something that you enjoy, that you love. If you wouldn't do it for uh, the rest of your life, you shouldn't do it for a day, right? Find something that you enjoy doing whatever it is it doesn't matter you see people because people always try to pick well what's best and what's gonna give me the fastest results i'm like there's people who just run and that are in great shape there's people who do crossfit that are in great shape there's people who go to f45 that are in great shape there's people who do bodybuilding who are in great shape so it's less about the workout you're choosing and more about the intensity and consistency which are the next two pieces to workouts mm. right and if you love and enjoy what you're doing then it makes the next two things easy that's right? so true that's so true you can't just work out intensely once a year and expect all the results. It doesn't matter how hard the workout is, but you also, I hear this from nurses all the time. Well, I, I walk 10,000 steps a day. I'm on my feet all day. I'm like, but if that's what your body's used to, then it's no longer intense for you. And so you have to constantly improve those two things, the consistency and the intensity, and that's never going to change. And that's the hard part is like your body will, re if you're doing your workouts right, it will reject every single piece of you to go do that workout. Because at the end of the day, it should be hard. It should be intense. And your body doesn't want to do uncomfortable things. It doesn't want to spend energy it doesn't have to do. So if your body got to choose between sitting on the couch and saving some energy or going like sweat and be out of breath and your heart pounding, it's going to choose a soap every day, which makes it a mental journey too. You got to train yourself. So you're fighting your mind all the time. All the time. So when people say I'm not motivated, I said, that's good. That means your workouts are the right kind of workouts because your body doesn't want to go do it. And so you have to teach yourself not just to go do the workout and it be intense and it push yourself, even if for some people it's like a 15 minute walk because that's where mm -hmm. you're at right now. And that's the intensity because you don't move at all right now. And your body would still reject that because that's where you're at is like you yeah. don't even want to walk. And not only do you have to have the mindset to get yourself to go through that pain and that intensity, but now you got to do it on a consistent basis. And it's like, it's the price to pay, right? Like, and you know, that's where I ask people, I'm like, Everybody wants to be in better shape, right? But it's like, are you willing to pay the price to get in that shape? Like you want abs. I'm like, okay, these are the price. Like if you could pick a person and build them from the ground up that has abs, what would you make them do? I'm like, sweet. Are you willing to pay that price to have abs? And for some people, they aren't willing to make that sacrifice. And that's, that's right. okay. That's yeah. okay. There's yeah. no rules here. It's a matter mm -hmm. of what you want to do, but that's going to be what it comes down to workouts is it's less about the type of workout you're doing and more about you love it so you can do it long-term. You're consistent and you're improving over time, right? Like you can't just walk for 15 minutes the rest of your life. Eventually you'll do 20 minutes. Eventually you do 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's workout. a moving target. It's a Correct. moving target, forcing change. And then the second pillar is nutrition. And of course, this is going to be where everybody is doctor here and they feel like they already know everything about nutrition, right? But mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is there's always more to learn. And I think it's just, there's some foundational rules for people in general, but I think everybody's different right? Some people have thyroid issues. Some people need to eat more calories, less calories, how many carbs you eat, what, what, how much protein, the quality of foods you could, everybody thinks that chicken is healthy, but what if you have a food sensitivity to chicken, right? Mm -hmm. You never have thought about that unless you had an expert helping you, right? We had somebody who was eating vegetables in their salad, raw vegetables. Everybody knows vegetables are healthy, but it was causing inflammation because their body wasn't digesting the raw vegetables. We said, why don't you try cooking your vegetables? And that was the thing that the bloat went away right? Uh -huh. yeah. it's, it's those things that people don't think about because again, when I say apple or cookie, you say, well, obviously apple's healthy. So then everybody's an expert, but there's so much more to that. So usually my rule of thumb when it comes to you just getting started is to just track what you eat because you're going to be more diligent about what you're doing. And I think everybody has their opinions and everybody says, oh, I eat pretty good until the weekend comes around and you're not in your routine anymore. Right. And if you could track what you do on the weekdays versus the weekends, you can start to see where's the variable, where are things missing? Are you getting stressed with work and you're not eating as much on the weekdays and you're binging on the weekends or are you perfect during the week? And then on the weekends, you're, you know, you're so busy running around with the kids sports that you're not eating on the week. Like and you have this yo-yo effect or you say that keto is the way to get you to lose weight and you start cracking your food and you realize you're not even doing keto because you're eating way more carbs than you're supposed to be eating. Right. Like, uh, yeah, I did. I did a video on tracking the other day and mm -hmm. it, 
one of the most powerful things because it creates a, such a high level of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. we, we tend to remember the favorable things we do and forget the unfavorable things we do. <laughs> well, and it's just it's so interesting to me because I had somebody come in the other day and their body fat percentage went up. We got them on the scale and like the percent of body fat went up and they were so mad. They're like, what do I need to be doing? I've been working out five days a week. And they come to our gym and I'm like, I was like, have you been tracking your food? They're like, well, I just started up again because they had stopped tracking because again a lot of times we start to see success yeah. and you get comfortable and you're like oh i don't need to do that anymore yeah. it's yeah, sleep, like sleep on a win sleep yeah. on a win yeah and so then eventually the weight comes back on and then they got to get back to tracking and i said but i hate tracking my food it's so tedious i said well and this comes back to like this is the obstacle it seems so mm -hmm. simple right just track your food but for this person it's like and i answer them like well would you rather have the pain of being overweight or the pain of tracking your food which is the greater pain and that goes back to the original motivation is how deep does the why cut how much does it mean to you that the body fat percentage went up because if it meant that much to you tracking wouldn't seem that bad if it helped you lose the body fat percentage that's exactly right so so the third thing because i want to make sure we get through and have time yep. so the third thing you said accountability oh by far the most that's important thing. A, that's a big thing in my in my clinic every day all day yep it's, day. it's the thing that most gyms and trainers miss mm -hmm. um because so a lot of Go ahead. So how do you implement accountability? How do you facilitate that? What, yep. what, what, is, what, what do you do? What do your trainers do? What I try to get as close to uh, just doing it for them as I can, but obviously that isn't going to happen. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, right now, the way it's structured is we do weekly check-ins, right? And we ask a series of questions like, of course, we want to see where the weight's at, but we also want to know how you feel. We want to see the progress photos. We want to know how your sleep's been. We want to know how much water have you been drinking. We want to know what supplements you're taking, like all the way down the list. Because if the scale's not moving, but you have more energy, the photos look better, you're losing inches and you're stronger in the gym and you're drinking more water and you're eating more food and then you're fueling yourself. It's like, I'm sure the weight will eventually come down. We just need to be patient, right? Versus the weight's not coming down, but you have a newborn baby and you're only sleeping two hours a night. I'm like, okay, well, maybe we got to like take a step back from the gym and start focusing on you just sleeping. Life. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so that's where accountability comes in, where it's like, you got to be a person, not a number. And that's where the connection comes in. We also do Zoom calls with our clients. Usually it's either um, bi weekly or once a month, just depending on where they're at in the program. And again, that builds the relationship with the coach, whether you're in person or online, that needs to be a standard because the coach needs to know what you're going through right mm -hmm. like if there's a week that you didn't work out and you didn't track your food and you have your coach yelling at you and hounding on you and kicking you in the butt to do this stuff but your dog just died it's like well maybe there needs to be some empathy there and like we need to know yeah. or, or maybe for teachers especially you started back up at work you were off for the summer you started back up at work and things are crazy let's get on a call and talk about well what does that schedule look like now and how mm -hmm. do we change this thing so the relationship you have with your coach is super important because you need to be vulnerable you need to be open you need to build that friendship so that way they can build the best program for you right mm -hmm. and then my favorite thing that we started implementing with all of our programs is if you don't show up you don't check in you don't get on the zoom calls your coach is literally going to call you on the phone and be like for lack of better words what the, where the hell are you at like where why aren't you doing this stuff and then that's where people are like because when one thing goes wrong everything goes wrong it's never just like mm -hmm. Oh, That's you know, true. I had one beer last night. It's like, yeah. well, I had one beer, then I, my alarm didn't go off, and then my kids were sick, and then my car broke down, and now I can't make it to the gym, and now it's like, <laughs> and then you don't even want to talk to your coach because you feel like you let them down. It's like, mm. but isn't that why you joined the program? Isn't that why you got started on this? Is because right. every time it gets hard, you give up, and you're tired of giving up, and you want this better life for yourself. Do you remember why you started this? Yeah. Right? And then it's like, a, oh, yeah. It's like, okay, sweet. So the plan we made isn't working for you given this situation. How do we need to modify this to get you on the horse and moving in the right direction? Yeah, no, and I, people, I like, I, I like that. I like that. That that I, I haven't. You you told me a little bit about this before. This these accountability calls, and I've never ever seen a facility do that before. So I think that's super great. Accountability. Even Dr. Colby and I, you know, we have an accountability call every week, every yeah. Friday at seven a.m. Um, <laughs> seven a.m. Colorado time, and we we set our goals, and then we hold each other accountable. We've been okay. slacking a little bit in this. We still have our call, but we're we're getting a little bit loose, right? You know, so that can also be a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's so, one of the so important because people make permanent decisions for temporary situations. Yeah. Right? They will work so hard and see so much progress for three months, and then one bad thing will happen. Their alarm yeah. doesn't go off one morning and they're late for work and they didn't make it to the gym. And then that night they went out for drinks with the friends. And now all of a sudden they throw away all the hard work they have. Yeah. 
because of this temporary thing or they're stressed out because their kids are sick and they don't have time and the kids are out, like they're supposed to be in school but now they got to be home and work is yelling at them it's like this is just temporary it's just one day it's one week one month like it happens that's you don't so make a permanent decision for a temporary situation that's so true that's so true and uh and yeah we throw everything out right away and then and then we're we're crashing and burning <laughs> and we don't we don't have to do that but pulling them back in before but that probably goes back to the um the, the concept of having a long-term mindset of, of this versus just you know right now uh, yep. so i have two other questions and i know i'm gonna have to run because i'm gonna have an appointment right away um but one question is if someone is brand new has never been in the gym they're intimidated they they want xyz outcome they know their why the cut is deep etc but what what would how would you approach them what would you tell them if there was two three things you could tell a newbie absolute new coming into your into your facility what would three things that you would tell them if you were going to give them some advice brand new they're listening to this right now they're like wow i like roy i i think i think i'm motivated to get into this um uh, what would be three things you would tell them um i guess the first thing is that slow progress is fast progress okay um nobody likes to hear that it's not the sexy thing to talk about but at the yeah. end of the day the you know i'd rather somebody lose the 50 pounds over a year than in one week because if you do it over a year then i know that you're sticking with it right mm -hmm. and it's gonna because at the end of the day when you are 10 20 30 years from now you're not going to care if it took you one week or one year to lose the weight or be healthier. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of if you're still there. Future yeah. you matters, right? Yeah. Um, the second thing is understand that the journey, if it was, and we hear this all the time, it's so cliche, but if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? Life is going to challenge you. It's going to throw you curveballs. Set yourself up with the accountability and have the coach surround yourself with the right people and ask for help when the hard stuff happens because most people don't want to do that it's easy to ask for help and check in when everything's going great and fine and dandy it's hard to check in and be held accountable when things aren't going so well and you want to give up okay, okay so that's number two yeah oh. and i like that and this is right off the cuff so I'm, I'm yeah putting you're, you're <laughs> putting me on the spot i feel like i'm, I'm holding my own maybe, maybe it maybe it would be maybe it would be something you tell them what to look for in a facility okay um, you've already hit some of them the accountability yeah. um i think the biggest i think that's going to be the biggest thing is when you go and look for a facility you're trying to find all three pillars okay like are they going to provide you the workouts because again planet fitness doesn't give you the workouts they just give you the equipment right yeah. Yeah. are they going to give you the workouts are they going to give you the nutrition plan are they going to give you the accountability and then is it custom to you because one of the biggest things is like you'll find let's say a doctor who they themselves keto worked for it and so that's all they recommend is keto yeah. right and yeah. so if keto doesn't work for you now this person can't recommend anything different right? right or whatever the case is so the idea is to find something that they're willing to adapt and change things based on what you need and what's going to work for you not what they think has worked for them and should work for everybody because it's not that's right 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 yeah no, I think that's, I think that's great. I think that's great. So now if there's, um, I don't know, two things you could tell someone that was seasoned, but they hit a plateau in their workouts. They, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're whatever the plateau is, but they're not their gains. They're whatever it is, their, their, their progress. What would be two things you would tell someone seasoned that say that they're getting fed up with it? Yeah. So if they are plateaued in their progress, um, would, in the like, and, and it could even be, it doesn't necessarily need to be a technique, but a new strategy to pursue, a new aspect to pursue, a new clinic to pursue. Mm -hmm. So if, if they're stuck specifically when it comes to workouts, again, I think 70% of people's success comes from nutrition, right? So a lot of people in the beginning think they're doing the right things, but anything you do in the beginning right is more than what you were doing before. So you have these beginner gains, right? You see usually some pretty quick progress. Yeah, And just because it worked for you up to this point doesn't mean that doing the same thing is the right thing. So you might need to be eating more to fuel yourself to be able to push through that. Or maybe it's a rest and recovery thing, right? That needs to happen. Maybe you're pushing too much because that tends to happen too. You go from three days a week, four days a week, to five days a week, to yeah. seven days a week, no excuses. Yeah. I have no days off. And then all of a sudden you're hitting these plateaus because you're not getting the rest and recovery you need. Yeah. Right? So so one thing you would say, reevaluate nutrition because you might have hit your, you know, your beginner gains. You might have, you might have flatlined there. And then the other one, what would the other, what would it, something? What would so 
I guess the second thing is a lot of us, we get comfortable into our routines, right? Um, so this happened for me, for example, like when I did bodybuilding, I would be lifting and I hit these plateaus, but I didn't want to change my routine because I loved my routine so much and it worked. And again, that's where I feel like the accountability and having a coach is going to push you to change it. And then, you know, I would change my split and change the workouts to work out differently so you have different mm -hmm. stimulus that's happening yeah. and then i'd fall in love with that routine and then i would never want to go back to the old routine right but, but if there's an out an outsider like a coach they're watching this and they're not married to one routine so 100%. they're able to be more objective well and that yeah. happens all the time it happens with yeah, nutrition. I, I, i'm thinking think about it even with myself with yeah my work well for sure. i do it with my nutrition too like i'm like mm -hmm. oh i know what to do and then i feel like this is what i would recommend for my client who looks and has the same goals as me this is what i recommend but I'm me. I can double that because you know, I'm me. And then I end up doing the same thing that everybody else runs. Yeah, yeah, you you yeah. go too hard, too fast. You're not playing the long game. And so even coaches need coach, like even me, like I have accountability people, like I have my coaches here that look at what I'm doing in my workouts and I'm showing up to class because I need it just as much as everybody else. There's no exceptions to the rules when it comes to those things. That's true. That's true. The rules never change. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I know we're going to have to wrap up here, but I appreciate your time and I like your insights. I know we could go on forever and ever and ever like we did on your podcast. So we'll have to have you on again, but we're going to maybe pick some other, other concepts of the inner workings. But for people who have listened to this and, and maybe, maybe you inspired them, maybe there's a little bit of a spark. Now they kind of know who you are. What would be the best way for them to reach out to you? So there's two big ways, I guess three. Okay. The first one uh, is social media, like Instagram. It's Roy underscore you. Yeah, I'll have it all below. Yeah. It'll all be um, below. The second one is we have a lot of free resources. So like on, if you're on Facebook, we have our rough family Facebook group and literally we do free challenges, free information. I do lives every single week to like just give you the information. Like I don't want information to be the reason why you're not successful. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can be a part of the group, learn everything you need. And the only thing that usually happens is either one, you're going to be super successful because you've actually learned the things you need to be doing to be successful. And you'll probably bring your friends, which would be great. Or two, you realize, man, I know all this information, but I don't know how to implement it in my life or I need some accountability. And then maybe you'll ask us to do some coaching with you. Right. And that's great yeah. too. But at the end of the day, the resources are free. Help is always free. So Facebook would be great as well. It's the rough family Facebook group. And then of course, if somebody just wants to email me, I'm always happy to chat in that way as well. And I know you'll put the email and stuff all in the yeah. description below. It'll all be there. It'll all yeah. be there. So um, I guess that's a wrap, but I appreciate you. I appreciate your passion. I appreciate what you do and I appreciate you treating your clients when they first walk in, like it's your significant other, family, loved one, your mom walking in. And I think that's absolutely critical. So well, I appreciate um, you, man. And I've learned so much from you as well. So um, I love our relationship and I can't wait to be back and have you back on my podcast and do all the things, man. So I really do appreciate it. We're going to do that. Okay. I look forward to the next one. Thank you. Later. How was that? Definitely that's enjoyed good. that, huh? Yeah. 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 The... Yeah, Roy, pretty pretty wild, and how he, you can tell how passionate he is. He gets really, really deep into into the motivators, the the whys. I st really started to hit him with 101 questions, and um, like you know, what who are the most successful people that come in, or or what are the pieces that people need, and that's when he gets into, and he really stands behind these, like nutrition, his workouts. Everybody sees him as you know a gym, but but he is getting into nutrition. And he is getting in the accountability piece. I, I haven't been around that many gyms, but I, I haven't seen a gym that if you miss your training sessions, they call you that day and try to and hunt you down and, you know, not, not judge, but make sure that there's nothing wrong and make sure that you're going to get on target for the next. <laughs> well, and it, it's hard. I mean, from an accountability piece, it's hard when you, you know, that you've, you know, you've made the, the commitment mm -hmm. and you're like, I'm going to do this. And you know, if you don't, they're going to call you on it, right? Yeah. And, and hey, when he's hey, in Glenn, I know that we said that we were going to meet at 5 a.m. to go to the gym. Uh, you're not here. Just wondering, is everything okay, buddy? And you're like, God, I just wanted to sleep a little bit. I know that's I right. And and he establishes that, that he's going to hold people accountable when they start. So it there's less chance of them slipping because they know they're going to be you know called out. And, and, and then when he talked about that, I liked when he said permanent decision, people make permanent decisions uh, based on uh, for temporary situations, like 
like I was mentioning before, you know, if, and he talked about, you know, if your car broke down, well, suddenly it's like, well, I can't go to the gym it, or, and you throw in the towel with one problem. That's a temporary obstacle, but then you make a permanent decision that you're not going to, you know, you're not going to follow through. Right. Because I mean, even, even from my personal, like I, I'm a perfect example of this, right? Mm-hmm. Our second kid was working a lot because my wife was staying home with him and I just like fell out of the routine. And then two years later, I'm still out of the routine, right? That's right. Yeah. So and you actually, made a permanent decision yep, based off, off of uh, a temporary uh, situation. Situation. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy to say I'm back at, in the gym. Um, mm-hmm. But again, he talks about like your why too, right? So that was mm-hmm. another part that hit home for me. My why was my kids. You get to the right. point where I'm like, okay, I'm getting older. My kids are getting heavier. I want to be able to pick them up as long as possible. Yeah, you and know? I like the con- I like the concept of moderation, sustainable moderation. He said a, a workout. If a workout isn't sustainable, um, you're just not going to keep up with it. And 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 then then he said that if if you're only planning on doing something for a month or, you know, giving it a try for a few weeks, you probably sh- shouldn't, he doesn't really say, it, but you probably, if you, if you can't, if you can't make it your life and make a commitment consistently forever, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to get the outcomes you want. You're going to go on and fall off and go on and fall off. And and so many well, people. Well, not lose. a good fit for the culture of his gym. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so many people, you know, do you, do you want to lose weight? Or what's what is success? I think he says it, losing weight or keeping it off. Right, that that's powerful because how many people do the yo-yo thing? Right, everybody. Mm-hmm. everybody. Um, so there was a lot of gems in here. The three pillars was huge um, consistency, and then what you know what he would tell somebody new that has never been in the gym to prepare them for success versus someone that is conditioned and and you know more of of a veteran that hit a plateau. And I, I, I liked how he said even himself, he can hit plateaus and get complacent of his regular workouts and routines. And then his trainers, you know, call him out on it and say, Hey, you know, Roy, you're, you're, you we're, we're getting too much of a routine. That's where you're hitting a plateau. We need to, we need to change it up. Uh, so very highly emotionally intelligent to be able to uh, not get tangled up in in the patterns that everyone else does and, and, and again, and pull himself out and look at, at the problem again, um, you know, from, from a different reference point. So anyway, Roy is definitely a master of the psychology of motivation and I'm glad we had him on and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to maybe another topic. Maybe we, again, we can get into the nuts and bolts of, of, you know, of physiology and stuff like that workouts. So, cause he was yeah. a competitive bodybuilder. He doesn't even talk about that. So maybe we can get him to talk about that. Topic number time. three. I love yeah. it. <laughs> episode number three with your boy Roy, (laughs) but uh, we'll put all his contact information below. Again, he has online programs. He has a very successful with those people are very successful as well. If you're in a Colorado area or the Northern Colorado area, um, he has his check him out. We'll put a link to his website and all of his online resources. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can always reach out to us as well. Our contact information is info at brainstorming with the docs.com. Get us on our website. Mine is northlakeschiropractic.com. Dr. Glenn's is drgharrison.com. And again, hit like and subscribe, turn on notifications because we're going to continue to roll out content like this every other week. And hopefully we roll out something that you get value out of and you enjoy. And stay tuned because more's more's coming down the pipe. Sounds good. I look forward to the next one. All right, buddy.